Today I'd like to continue our study on the armor of God, and this is part two of that study. And I'd like to read from Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, and put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in that evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to the end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And I'd like to key in today on verse 14, where it says, Stand fast, or stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Here the idea is a picture of a Roman soldier. And this soldier would have worn a tunic, and that was their outer garment that served as his primary clothing. But before battle, he needed to gird up his tunic so that it wouldn't get in the way. And just like that soldier, before any one of us enters into battle, such as it tells us in verse 12, all that would encumber us or the soldier had to be dealt with. Anything that would get in the way of a good defense must go or be secured. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 says, No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And then Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. You see, the soldier must be disciplined, and he must be committed. It is the committed Christian, just as it is the committed soldier, and the committed athlete who's prepared. There is a readiness, a singleness of mind, like the nation of Israel had on that first Passover, as we read in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 11. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, so you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. They were to eat that meal and be ready to go at a moment's notice. And just as there is to be a readiness for the soon coming of the Lord as well. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, we read, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And our Lord in the book of Luke in chapter 12, verse 35 said this, let your waist be girded and your lamps be burning. In other words, we need to be ready. And what girds up the believer is the belt of truth. Now I want you to think about this for a minute. Because you see, truth is not my truth, nor is it your truth. The bottom line is, is we don't own truth. 
It ought to own us. It is not in us, but outside us. And it is what girds up that garment, makes us ready and disciplined. And that truth is found solely in the word of God. And without it, and without knowledge of biblical teaching, the believer, as Paul has already pointed out, is subject to being carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by the craftiness and deceitful scheming in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 14. And as the day of the Lord draws near, we need to remember that truth is waning. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, and we talked about this in my last devotional. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Frankly, we live in an age where truth, biblical truth, is really under attack. I was thinking about that the other day as I read a Twitter post by J.D. Greer, who is the president of the Southern Baptist Convention, where they disfellowshipped four separate churches over their stand on homosexuality and a number of other things. And there was a number of incredible comments, but one was a quote that I'd like to just share with you because I thought it was striking. It says this, Women cannot allow patriarchy to interpret scripture for them. LGBTQ person cannot allow straight evangelical white males to interpret the scripture for them. And American descendants of slavery must reject white hermeneutics if they are to be liberated from oppression. That was found in an article called Lent of Liberation by Sherry Ill Mills. Do you see what's happening here? The believer, if he or she is to be successful in battle, cannot allow ourselves to be intimidated by demagoguery like that last quote and obfuscation. We must be grounded in the word. I like what 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says. It says, be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The particular Greek word spodaza, which is the word for be diligent, carries the idea of having a zealous persistence to accomplish a particular objective. And then the word becomes profitable. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's a God-breathed book and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. We will not be distracted or deceived if we love God's word. I love what it says in Psalm 119 verses 97 through 100. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You through your commandments make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep your precepts.